Welcome, Cecil. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so many of the composers uh, on this project have no experience with the guitar, and you're not like that. You have a big jazz guitar background. Um, so I wondered about your nylon string experience. Was this the first time you had written for nylon string? Do you play nylon string? Just maybe you could talk about that a bit. Sure. Um, so I've I've never written for nylon string before, um, had never written for solo guitar before either. Uh, so it was an interesting challenge for sure. Um, I really just tried to, uh, I don't know, draw upon the influence of, you know, people like Leo Brower. Like that's kind of really the only uh, experience I have listening to that, that style, uh, solo guitar, nylon string. Um, and also draw upon like my jazz influences with some of the dissonances and harmonies and that kind of thing. Yeah. So you didn't listen to any early like classical era music. It was mostly Brower. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really familiar with, with a ton of the repertoire. Um, I just remember a teacher of mine showing me him, his uh, compositions a while back. So that was kind of what I had in mind a little bit. <laughs> and, and when you were writing, did you work it out on the nylon or you were just using your jazz guitar for that? Just my arch top um, that I usually top. use for for jazz stuff, um, and I, you know, some of the things I wasn't really sure how they would they would work out uh, technically because I don't really have experience playing with my my nails or anything like that. But um, Silvio, the guitarist that performed it, uh, we've had a lot of correspondence, so he would let me know like this doesn't really work, or um, you know, this part is kind of hard to execute technically, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's sort of typical you know, composer, performer, back and forth. Definitely. So you mentioned harmony. So I, I, I'm interested in the harmony here. Um, you know, it, it feels um, sort of jazz influenced and non-tonal. And then we come to the second section of the piece where it starts, to, we get more major and minor or, you know, altered, but major and minor chords. So mm -hmm. I wonder if you could just talk about that language and the shape of the harmony in the piece. Sure. Um, a lot of it was just kind of based on, um, I'd say the, the first half of it was based on just what I was hearing. Um, so just kind of a lot of the dissonances, there weren't really, um, there wasn't a specific theory or concept behind it. Um, but I knew that I wanted to, I wanted the piece to unfold in that way that you described where it's um, very non-tonal and then it comes into more of a, more of a tonality halfway through. And I was interested also in in the dynamics, um, you know, in the beginning and later on as well. You write, play frantically, vary speed, dynamics randomly. So you're really leaving it up to the player uh, to just figure that stuff out. And then about halfway through, you start controlling dynamics quite a bit, and there are crescendo mm -hmm. marks and all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. I guess it almost feels to me like it goes from a jazz world to almost more of a classical one. And I wondered if that was in your concept. I'd say that um, the dynamics were definitely influenced by um, sort of that same harmonic um, idea that I was talking about, where I, I wanted it to be uh, very out there and, and frantic um, sounding in the beginning of the piece. And then I wanted it to be more controlled and, and more tonal towards the end of the piece. So I think that that's where those more uh, specific dynamics came in um towards the end of the piece yeah um what about the title no fuss sure um so that's a a saying that my my dad would say all the time um just in response to a lot of different things um and he actually passed uh shortly before the pandemic so this piece was kind of a a brief tribute to him of sorts mm, sorry to hear that thank you yeah but it's a way to process grief is to write something absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I guess the other question I had is, um, you know, we have a lot of notes, you cover a lot of the range, you're using harmonics, and then these trills kind of peppered throughout the piece really stand out to me. And um, Cecil really sort of was very deliberate about them, sort of getting them started very gradually. So when you were thinking of the trills, were you thinking of this cross thing, cross string thing that he did? Or were you working them out as left-hand trills on the jazz guitar? I'm just curious about those. I was uh, kind of hearing them more as as left-hand trills, but I was really um, 
thrilled by the way that Silvio executed it with the, um, you know, how he played it across two strings. I thought that that kind of gave it even more of a um, frenetic quality, you know, especially the, the first half of the piece. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So do you play the piece on jazz guitar? I have, I've actually never played it um, all the way through. I kind of played bits and pieces of it and then um, compiled it together in a uh, notation software. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. so you really heard it on the, on the MIDI rather right. than on the instrument. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I guess I had another question about notation. Um, was, was Sylvie choosing harmonics or did you, because it, it, there are zeros above notes and some are open strings and some are harmonics. Mm -hmm. So um, was he choosing the harmonics or did you choose those in advance? That was also part of our correspondence. Um, was he asked if those were supposed to be open strings or harmonics, but I kind of wanted to just leave it up to him so we could get kind of a different performance out of the piece every time. Um, so anywhere that there's, I think that I initially envisioned those as just being open strings, um, but anywhere that he played harmonics was just up to him at that point. Hmm. Interesting. And I guess the other thing that stands out to me is, um, and maybe this is a jazz guitar thing, but texturally, you kind of like the thick middle range of the guitar, or you do in this piece at least. You're not you're not going above the twelfth fret, or you know, writing really low. It's it's kind of staying in that middle area, and that feels perhaps jazz influenced. But I, I wondered about that. Sure, I I would say that a lot of um, what I improvise is is in that that register. I just like the way that the instrument speaks in that in that area of the fretboard. Um, and I think that when I hear, you know, lines, improvisational lines in my head, they're usually in that register. I don't really hear a lot of higher, higher stuff. You know? <laughs> and it could be a result of, of listening habits, like a lot of the guitarists that I listen to, like uh, West Montgomery or Grant Green tend to play in that, that area, you know. Well, it, it allows for lots of harmony with, with the, you know, the lines of the melody going as well. Whereas when you get above 12, you can't do harmony as well, of course. Right, right. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about the piece? Um, nothing off the top of my head, to be honest. No. Yeah. I hope it gets played a lot. I think it's it's quite intriguing. And um, Thank you. You know, I, I was um, interested. In, my girlfriend is a, a former uh, classical guitar player, and she loves to listen to jazz. And... Um, she really doesn't like a lot of the new music that I play. I mean, mm. it's it's not like, honey, I'm going to come uh, support your concert. It's like, what are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> then I'll decide. So, right. um, so I played the piece for her. You know, I was just kind of curious to hear her reaction, and she really, really got into it. Really, you know, get engaged, and she'd be the first to leave if she wasn't engaged. <laughs> she, <laughs> she stayed there the whole time. Um, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, so I think you may have found a way to sort of cross, the, you know, include, I should say, both of those worlds uh, in a nice way. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, nice to talk to you, and, and thank you so much for, for the new piece. Yeah, thanks for having me, David. All right.